Hello, this is Tanya with TK Sewing Machine and Repair, and today I have a really pretty uh, Clone 15 machine. And what that means is that this machine was styled after a Singer 15. Not exactly, but uh, you can tell by um, the stitch uh, length dial and um, just the way the machine looks. Uh, these machines were made in Japan, and um, they were badged for all different kinds of companies. This one says it's a good housekeeper, <laughs> which is kind of cool. And it's a really pretty kind of the gray-blue color. Um, these machines are just as good or better than a, a Singer machine that they were copied from. Um, they did add uh, another feature, which is the uh, drop feed dog. So if you wanted to do uh, free motion quilting or uh, embroidery stitches, all you have to do is uh, drop the feed dogs and put on a different foot, and you could do that. Uh, this is your stitch length uh, lever right here. All the way up is reverse. And if you wanted to lock in the stitch, you have right here, which is different than the Singer, if you wanted to lock it in at 15 stitches per inch, then you, you would put 15 right there. And so, let me find the foot pedal, there we go. And that way it won't go longer but you can still reverse so it's a really nice feature that uh, both the uh, singer and the clone machines have this machine is in really good shape um, it has uh, very little uh, paint loss on it uh, the one thing that's really cool that I have not seen before is that this uh, back round plate tells you what needle to use for the different types of uh, cotton fabric that uh, you sew. And that is a really kind of, I think that's really cool. It also has a cover for the take up arm um, uh, bolt, which is really nice. It has the matching light and a matching motor it is it's a one amp motor which is pretty strong for uh, a domestic machine the largest motor i've seen on a domestic is a 1.4 amp um but it's just beautiful there's a little bit of paint loss uh here on the uh on the stitch length uh plate um, a little tiny bit uh, on the chrome right here on the bobbin winder. Uh, but this is just a really, really lovely machine. It has all of its original parts. The one thing that I did not have to go with this machine was the pedal, but I found a pedal in my inventory that matches it fairly well. It's a gray pedal. And I resheathed the um, cord to the pedal. Nothing wrong with the cord. I just resheathed it so it's nice and stiff uh, for when you put it down on the floor. So um, this machine is really easy to use. So let's take the thread out. One of the things about this machine is that your presser uh, foot um, uh, indicator up here, you don't screw it, you push it in and it, there's little numbers here that tell you how much pressure you're putting on the foot. So if you're doing lightweight fabrics like cotton, then you would probably use as much pressure as the machine will give. If you were going to do uh, some thickness like uh, several layers of denim or canvas, you would want to lessen the pressure on the presser foot. 
Um, so you take the thread from the spool. There's a guide right here. You take it between the uh, tension disc and run the thread through the spring underneath the arm. And this machine features a slip through on the take up lever, which is awfully nice. You don't have to thread it. And then through this thread guide, through this thread guide, and then uh, from left to right into the needle. Aha, uh -huh, found the hole. <laughs> and there we go. Put this thread back up here. And the bobbin thread we already have up. So I've been doing a lot of test stitches, uh, working the oil uh, off of the machine um, since I did put a lot of oil on it to, you know, get it loosened up and clean. So you put the your fabric underneath the presser foot. Get all the little stray threads. This fabric is fraying. And I'm going to go to the longest stitch. I'm going to start with the needle down. And this machine will really sew. It has a lot of power. And then we'll go in reverse. And it just makes a really nice stitch. really nice stitch both uh, top and bottom so let's try it on a piece of leather I don't have a leather needle in the machine but I do have a heavy-duty needle in the machine so we're going to see what it does with this piece of leather here just choose through it like butter. It would help if I didn't have it on my turntable too. And the stitch looks really good. You can't see the black thread on the bottom, but you can see the white thread on top. It looks really, really good. So this would be considered a heavy duty domestic machine. Uh, you can sew leather on it. You wouldn't be able to do like um, knife cases that you're using like two or three millimeter leather, um, which would be a total of four to six millimeters of leather. But you could certainly use a cowhide like this. This is about a one millimeter, 1.2 millimeter thickness. And I suspect that this machine would probably do uh, two layers of this. It would be great for denim projects. It would be awesome for um, making bags. It's a straight stitcher only, but it is a powerful beast uh, as demonstrated. So if this machine ends up in your home, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>